Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Selectmen's meeting for July 13th, 2015. Um, I'd like to start and, and request that uh, we have a moment of silence since our last Selectmen's meeting. We've lost two uh, real Arlingtonians, uh, Jim Robillard and Ed Coughlin. And so please, a moment of silence. May God have mercy on their souls. Uh, Arlington is certainly less without both of them. Uh, we also want to, uh, on a happier note, uh, welcome. We have a new editor of The Advocate with us tonight, so we all want to welcome John Santa to Arlington. John. James. Uh, James. Oh. James. I would help if you change your name to John. So, <laughs> so, I, would, come here so I would look But you foolish. can report him as Charles yeah, when you write up your stuff. Yeah. 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 First column, what idiot runs the Board of Selectmen? I can see it now. All right, we start with the consent agenda. First of all, uh, under that, we go through these. If anybody's here uh, or wishes to speak on any of these, and then the Selectmen take a vote on all of these items. First is the minutes of the meeting of June 29, 2015. Second, we have reappointments to the Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee, Doug Greenfield and Ron Sender. Reappointments to the Permanent Town Building Committee, John Cole and Alan Reedy. And we have a request for a special one-day alcohol license for the Cyrus Dallin Art Museum Summer Soiree Fundraiser, Sunday, August 9th, 6 to 8 p.m., um, Heather Laval. And then we have a re request for a contractor drain layers license for the soccer group out of Bill Ricker, Mass. Anybody here wishing to speak on any of those? Yes, Jerry. Jerry Trumbly for the liquor license? Yeah, sorry, yep. We, uh, we have millions that watch at home, Jerry, so we need to have you at the microphone. Okay. Jerry, hey, Jerry tilt the mic up a little bit so it's pointed at you. There you go. Yeah, even a little more. Go for it. So the Cyrus Dallin Art Museum is having a summer soiree. We're requesting a one-day liquor license for Sunday, August 9. The soiree is 6 to 8. It is featuring the unveiling of one of Cyrus Dallin statues that is very little known, called On the Warpath. Dr. Daniel Fairbanks of Utah is the restorer of the statue. He will um, come and discuss how he restores statues. He's a dean of uh, science and health at Utah Valley. Not only is he a sculptor and a restorer, he's a forensic anthropologist. His wife, Dr. Donna Fairbanks, will play a violin piece. We will have honorings of James McGough and Stephen Gilligan, who were catalysts to getting the um, museum approved by town meeting. Um, we expect to have hors d'oeuvres and beer and wine and soft drinks available. We're going to also have a silent auction. We are very pleased that we're able to offer this without the support of the community. Uh, we have um, sponsorships from um, American Alarm, Cent Century Bank, <coughs> Leader Bank, Watertown Savings and Winchester Cooperative Bank in addition to the Dallin family. So we're very excited about unveiling this piece which is lovely and I think you've all received, I hope you've all received invitations and you notice we didn't put a picture of it on the postcard because it's really quite unusual and not seen very often. Um, we hope you all attend and did I Get anything. Oh, <laughs> you can check out our website if you're interested in reviewing what I've said or you choose to buy tickets. They're avail available at www.dallin.org. If you have any questions, I would love to answer them. So is it a permanent display or, or it's on loan to us? No, it is, it's ours. It was donated in 2007 and it came to us in eight pieces and a lot of other damage. Yeah. And frankly, we couldn't afford um, the restoration of it. It's several thousands of dollars. And uh, Daniel said that he would love to restore it, so we shipped it to Utah and he's had it a couple of years. He, he does that as a pastime, which is wonderful. 
not a pastime I'm capable of, but, and he's going to drive it back. So we're unveiling it, we're having our soiree at the Whittemore Robbins house, and it will be installed at the museum when we get ourselves another inch of space and push some of the sculptures around. Okay. Board members, other questions? Steve? Oh, no? Okay. Thanks, Jerry. Good luck with Thank that. Thank you, Kevin. That's June 9th from 6 to 8. August 9th. August 9th. God. Someone wake me up here today. Anybody else wish to speak on any of the items I just referenced? Come on up. Yep. Hello, I'm, hello, I'm Christopher Tonkin from the uh, chairman of the Arlington Bicycle Advisory Committee, as you probably know by now. I'd yes, just sir. like to uh, say we'd like to reappoint uh, Doug Greenfield and Ron Sender to our committee. They've both served admirably in the years before and uh, are happy, apparently happy to and willing to serve again. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Thanks for your service as Any well. Any questions for me while I'm questions? here? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Anybody else? All those in favor of the consent agenda, please sign. Approval. Second. Second. <laughs> James, you got him off his knee, yeah. man. You're my new best friend. Here, take over. <laughs> I'm afraid to touch it. On the motion by Mr. Byrne and seconded by Ms. Mahan, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Me. <laughs> uh, for a uh, next appointment for the tree committee, um, Eric Amundson. Eric, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Sir? Please come forward. <laughs> you have to go through a grilling when you're newly appointed, but okay. not really. Thank you very much for your willingness to serve. Why are you willing to serve, sir? Um, <clears throat> I, I've been inspired by, uh, I, I think specifically, Brian Murray, uh, an old friend of mine, and uh, gotten more interested in trees as time's gone on. So that's why. Mm -hmm. Great. Questions, comments from the board? I'll say that uh, as I'm the nominally the liaison of this board to the tree committee, and I, I don't attend that many meetings, but I read the minutes and check out the agenda and stuff like that. And I will say they are one of the more active committees that I'm involved in. So, uh, I, and they have been really good at recruiting new members to help them along too. So, I'm um, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Anybody else? Motion. Move approval. Second. Move approval. Um, Anything else, Eric? Or? No. Okay. Uh, on the motion by Mr. Dunn and seconded by Mr. Curo, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Eric, thank you very much for your willingness to serve. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Uh, introduction, newly appointed member to the Arlington Historic District Commission. Remind me, the appointment was made at the last meeting, am I correct? But uh, Margaret Capodano was unable to be with us that night, so welcome. It's the grilling. You just you got to go through it. I know. It's awful. It. It's just, yeah. <laughs> so um, thank you very much. And is there any reason in particular you're interested well, I, in this? I think I'm very um, appreciative and respectful of the mission of the Historic Society and having lived on a street that has been part of their mission for the last 16 years. I uh, I felt that it was important that we continue continue the tradition of having someone from Avon Place. Uh, on on the committee, so mm -hmm. here I am. Great, thank yeah. you. Second. Okay. Further questions, discussion? Okay. You've already been approved. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. And Joe, I think I should turn this over to you, sir, <laughs> <laughs> because you are the you are the driving force oh, behind this appointment, which we're about to make, Mr. Curo. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, we're very pleased this evening. We've, we've um, traveled the road over the last uh, year. You'll recall that, that this board um, did uh, take up and uh, proposed to town meeting the idea of establishing a position of uh, poet laureate for the town of Arlington. This is a route that obviously has been done in a number of other jurisdictions, both local, state, and, uh, and national. But um, uh, you know, partly given the emphasis that we've been uh, placing on uh, the arts in our community, uh, our long uh, literary heritage, including having the, um, I think it's the oldest uh, continuously operating uh, children's library in the country, mm. um, it, it seemed fitting and uh, you know, appropriate that we uh, tap into some of the great talent in our, um, our town and uh, seek to, um, to uh, call out this particular uh, honor. Um, we've certainly, we, we are known for a lot of our um, <clears throat> Other public artists, we just heard from Dallin Museum, of course, um, 
but uh, that this seems to be a, a way to uh, honor um, a contemporary uh, artist um, who's uh, um, you know, versed in, in, in letters and might be able to help inspire some of our younger people and, and people of, of all generations in the town uh, through their work. Um, I know that uh, Liza Halley, the um, chair of the uh, Poet Laureate Selection Committee, was not able to uh, come this evening. I do see some of the other members of the uh, Selection Committee, three, three members here. Um, uh, is one of you going to introduce the nominee, Ms. Howard? Yeah, with the chair's permission. Thank you. And I see also John, um, well, I'll let you introduce. This. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Jane Howard, and I've been privileged to be on the Poet Laureate Committee. And because Liz is away, I'm taking her place tonight. But Pamela Powell is also away. But with us tonight is also Jeff Boudreau yeah. and John Burt. Yeah. And it was a privilege for us to serve in this way. Uh, as you know, it was, we had 10 applicants and uh, it was really a difficult decision, but I think you'll be very pleased with the person that we chose. And uh, I'd like to introduce Miriam Levine, whom you now know quite well from her resume, and perhaps she'll tell you a little bit more about herself. Thank you. Jane, before we hear from her, could you tell me why I was rejected? Um, <laughs> Oh, I didn't submit, that's right. Sorry. Oh, maybe that's why I can't. <laughs> no. Far more qualified. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Kevin, if you get some coaching for me, next time you might make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With approval. <laughs> That's I'm against this appointment. Uh, <laughs> no, Miriam, the only way that would happen is if you totally ghost wrote the whole thing for me, believe well, you'd, you'd be surprised. But please. Um, I'm really delighted uh, that Arlington is, uh, has established this po uh, position, and I would be absolutely delighted uh, to accept it if you vote for me. Um, I've already been in contact with Andrea at the library, and I will be holding office hours there twice a week, and it will be, uh, among other things that I'll be doing, so people can come by with a poem. Uh, one uh, session will be in the early evening, another session will be in the afternoon, just for one-on-one. -on -one. I also hope to uh, hold workshops at classes at the high school and at the senior center, and do other things as well. I've got a long list. Awesome. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Yep. Who wants to go first, Mr. Dunn? I, I actually I don't have a question per se. I just I have so I've never gotten poems in my selectman's packet before, and it, I really enjoyed the, reading them. And I really enjoyed what you had to write, and I think that your um, reput your resume and your experience, not just as an author, but also as someone who works with communities and teaches, is, makes you an excellent choice. And I'm really thankful and excited that you're here to, to do the position, to, Thanks, to volunteer. Dan. Thank you. Mr. Carroll? I'm looking at, I see you have a folder with you, and I didn't know if you had a piece of work that you wanted to share with with the, the viewers at home or, w or with us or? Oh, maybe I'll, I, I actually brought this to a, a pass on to someone who called me earlier about getting, getting uh, some sort of press release or something and I was just gonna hand it over, but <coughs> I'll be glad to read a poem, a very, very short one that I think is in this packet. Yeah. Let's see. This is called Surfer at Wellfleet. And a lot of my poems are set in particular places. There's quite a few at, uh, set in Arlington, particularly at the ponds. But this one is a Surfer at Wellfleet. Where does he get the patience to wait through the twilight, rocking on his stomach in the break and surge, head to the side, as if he were sleeping? It's freezing in the afterglow when he finally rises on his lone, long ride home. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, were we done grilling her? Well, I just want to say uh, I've known Mr. and Mrs. Levine for a really long time. I actually 
used to play over their house many, many days and nights. Um, my brother Bob was really good friends um, with uh, their son David. And I remember when we were younger, we all knew that both Mr. and Mrs. Lou were very, very smart, but they, they always could come in and talk with us and, you know, keep us unguarded. And I have a lot of great childhood memories at the Levine home, and I'm thrilled to see how life circles back and we get to come back into each other's lives again. So I'm thrilled to see both of you. And thank you, Mrs. Levine. I appreciate it. No, that was an excellent poem. I'm very happy to support this. Like to Joe, why you make the motion? I'd like to move approval of the uh, nomination of the Poet uh, Laureate Selection Committee. And further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you to the committee for your hard work. Thank you. And then a Metropolitan uh, Area Planning Council alternative, uh, alternate representative, David Fields. David? So, Mr. Chair, uh, excuse me. So da David isn't able to be here tonight, but David's one of our staff planners, uh, technical planners in the uh, planning department. Uh, if the board would be willing to vouch, uh, allow me to vouch for him. Uh, this is an alternate position. Laura Wiener is the board's primary designee to the MAPC. Uh, however, Ralph Wilmer, who was the board's alternate representative, took a job with the MAPC, so he can't represent the board to the MAPC working for the MAPC, and that's what necessitated uh, this request to have David designated as the alternate representative. Okay, so motion? Move approval. Move approval, second, Dan. Discussion? Um, so on the motion by Mr. Kuro, Kuro, uh, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Um, Marie, anybody on the Citizens Open Forum? Okay, sure. I won't bother reading through the whole thing because I know he won't go longer than three minutes. I, I, will, I promise to keep it brief. Okay. I'm Steve Ravalak. I'm from 111 Sunnyside Avenue. And I'm here on behalf of myself and a few of my neighbors. Um, it's been a long time since anyone from my street came and talked, addressed the board about Dillboy, but unfortunately I'm here to address the board about Dillboy Stadium and to, to ask for your help, or to ask at least a favor. Uh, for a long, for you know, quite a period of time, the um, stadium's public address system was a, a noise problem. That's certainly gotten better over the, over the years. Um, but what I'm really here tonight about tonight is the cannon fire or the explosions whichever you'd uh, like to call them. One of the uh, WFN, w, well, the Boston Militia, uh, one of the women's football teams, whenever they play at Dillboy Stadium, they, uh, from what I have heard, bring a cannon and shoot it off whenever they um, score a goal. It's like having a bomb go off in your backyard. Um, and I could, I mean, it's loud enough from my house that I can feel the structure of the house shake anytime, they're, anytime, they, anytime they score. So I was wondering, could you, is there any chance that you could talk to our colleagues in Somerville about this? <laughs> okay, Mr. Chapterlain. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So Mr. Revelak, along with probably uh, nearly a dozen of his neighbors, emailed me over the weekend, and I actually responded probably when you were en route here okay. uh, uh, to you and your neighbors. I, I plan on reaching out to the mayor of Somerville tomorrow to see what we can do to address it. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. But, but the noise is better, did you start with? Did you say it's, it's better? The, the PA system is a lot better, yes. <coughs> yeah, okay, great. We've got them to put a limiter. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. But, and, but this is brand new. This is new. Yeah. And could I just add two sentences? Of course you can. Um, about three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, um, the chair, Mr. Greeley, and town manager, Adam Chaplin, and myself, we met with um, DCR, the new commissioner, mm -hmm. uh, to talk about the MUGAR project, but since uh, back in July 2012, the same three of us, along with some other people, the senator and reps, we met um, to get an agreement from the then DCR commissioner about after they leave there to replace the road in some way. Um, it still hasn't been done, but we did bring it up, um, and maybe, maybe if you could pass this on to the sunny <coughs> side neighbors, Excuse that uh, Dan Driscoll was there and basically said that, oh no, they kept going back and forth. I just said, fill the holes. And they said, no, because of the condition, we have to do something more than that, the liability. And correct me if I'm wrong, he said that the project had gone out to bid. Um, it was on a list, and we're just waiting to hear back. We're still playing phone tag, but, you know, I don't, I don't want you to think that any of us have forgotten that. Just, you know, 
that we're, is we're going to just keep banging and banging until hopefully something happens tonight and and she deserves a good deal of the credit for oh, yeah. staying it, on it, this yes, for years I, now yeah so I, we, we owe Miss <coughs> Mahana a debt of gratitude. Thank you. Oh, thank you for being so patient. I actually got yelled at by the senator because I brought it up. But <laughs> to me, it was as important as Mugar. So, but I just wanted to let you know we had an offer. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Steve. So now, um, other business, attend uh, discussion and adopt the Selectman's Handbook, Code of Conduct, Summary, and Awards, Proclamations, and Events. We are getting towards the end of this, but hang in there with us. There's still a couple more sections to go. Um, and Dan, I saw your email. Um, what was that related to in terms of? I don't recall. Was that an event? Something about an event? I had sent an email saying that when we do, uh, we might consider. Oh, uh, house party. Uh, block parties. Yeah, block yeah, exactly. parties. Okay. That's not in no. this section. Yeah. Okay, sorry. All right, so uh, why don't we start with code of conduct? Anybody, any comments, any additions, amendments, edits, deletions? Yeah, sure. It's really so small. I think you know, oh, that's all right. But it's just form. We can, when we spell insure, if we can do E N S U R E, it's just a court reporter versus insure. I yeah, it's, where it's, are you though? Just um, tell me where it is. It's under. Uh, Conduct, it appears in under A, um, I think it was number three, or was it, no, no, I'm sorry, it's the next page, I'm sure, where are you? Just show it in the page. Page three, number three. Page three, number three, and then there's, it, it, it's somewhere else too, though, it's not um, You know what, as I sit here, I'll go through um, and find the second one. But it's a small thing, we can just spell it that way. See, like if you go to page a three of five, and um, I just saw it, my eyes jumped off of it. Where is it? You're still looking for insure? No, I, uh, I, I found it yeah. twice. I was trying to point it out to you. But yeah, no, I got it. Oh, okay. Page okay. three, number three on the right. Yes. Oh, Mr. Gale, yeah, thank you um, very much. I just have to want to say that. I think that after we follow this, we will probably be have the utmost conduct of any single board in the whole entire Commonwealth. So thank you very much. You got that, James? <laughs> Not John? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, and any and all of this can be made available to you or to Mr. Sprague, of course. But it's not, we, uh, we vote on it by sections. So, yeah, Mr. Dunn. I am happy to support, to support this. I think that it really, if we can, uh, I think that we all I follow this fairly well to already. And I, uh, so I think, I was thinking about as I was rereading this today, like one of the places that I'm sure I can do better is when I find something out, sharing it better with the rest of the board. It's definitely something that I can be smarter about. But some of these other things I think are just really good common sense and uh, I'm happy to move approval. Thank and you, I'm happy to second. Mr. Carroll, yep, second. And, and I, I'd just like to say, I, I think in some ways this might be the most important part of the whole, the whole handbook, um, not just for us, but I think as an educational piece also for our constituents. I think that um, <coughs> the way that it lays out just exactly what the Board of Selectmen's limits of authority are, that we act as, as, as a complete board, not as um, individuals and uh, that we, we act through the, the staff and through the manager. I think um, uh, being presented as concisely as it is, um, <clears throat> more concisely than I'm stating it, <laughs> I think is, is an incredibly important um, piece and possibly the most important section of the, of the handbook. Thank you. Well said, anybody else? Yeah. And I have always felt in my 27 short years on this board that one of the most important qualities for an elected official to have is the ability to disagree politely or whatever, but we disagree and there are times certainly it's gotten heated in here, but that then the next issue we're able to move on and not let feelings of, you know, you didn't vote for me on that one or whatever. And this board, I believe, has always conducted itself uh, in that manner. But we should serve as an example for this community and also to keep in mind, we are five different individuals, and if all of us were to call town manager, town council, uh, which we do occasionally, necessarily so, uh, but if they have to take, you know, imagine uh, five phone calls per day from each one of us on, on uh, 
some of these um, some of these issues that uh, you know we we're, we're not letting them get their job done or whatever. So anyhow, I, I think all of you certainly behaved this way, and I congratulate you for it. So it was moved approval by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Curo. On the code of conduct, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, all those opposed. The next one is uh, <clears throat> on our events, uh, awards, proclamations, and events. Uh, and the, you know, the Selectman's Awards, we uh, do those every five years, and this uh, delineates that the process we follow, excuse <coughs> me, <coughs> has been, <clears throat> Each one of us appoint a member to a nominating committee. And the only thing that we've done differently here is that uh, we have always held that any member of this board can make a nomination individually, uh, of an individual for any of these awards or of a group for any of these awards. So what we're recommending here is that we follow a little bit of the process we follow for uh, CDBG which is the nominating committee would make, uh, would go through, anybody can make a nomination to the nominating committee, anybody on the nominating committee can make a nomination. And uh, then the nomination committee, whatever they want to go through in terms of a process of, of uh, culling down that list, and then they would make recommendations to us for at least one or two names for each one of these awards to the chairman and the vice chairman. And then any member of this board to the chairman and vice chairman can also make a recommendation. And then the chairman and vice chairman bring a slate of candidates to this board for final approval. The, the reason I believe this step um, would be helpful is I've always been nervous about uh, three names are recommended for an award and we only give it to one person. I think it's an embarrassment for the other two to have been nominated and us publicly say no. Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, so anyhow, what do you think of that? We're just adding that extra, that step in there was chair and vice chair or designees mm -hmm. uh, serve as a subcommittee. Does that make sense to people? Is that? You know, it's a, it, right, it also means any of you could make a recommendation to the chair and vice chair. You also could make a recommendation to that screening committee if you wanted to go that route. But, it, uh, but for us to then make kind of call it down, and, and it, it, I shouldn't say us, it won't be me, because I think it's, uh, what did you tell me, was it 2013? Anybody remember the last time? Well, it we says every five years. Right, the last but it's, time I'm trying to think of when the last, last time was. I think yes. it was your last chairmanship, and I, okay. but I believe yeah. it was in the... <coughs> right, so three years ago. Year. So yeah. uh, two years from now is when we would uh, go through this process again. Uh, then we're trying to um, uh, indicate, you know, uh, for proclamations, um, and then just, you know, uh, highlight we do the town day, town night, we do the sister city program, and if necessary, any anniversary celebrations. So questions or comments? Move approval. Move approval. Second. Second. <coughs> Further Excuse discussion? Me. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Uh, big, big amount of thanks to Doug, who really ends up writing all of this and, and taking 100 ideas, and Stephen and Marianne, um, and also uh, um, Eve, I want to say Eva. Why can't I get names right tonight? Eve from Adam's office, so thank you very much. All right, item number 11. This is for a discussion and vote regarding the scheduling of a public hearing on the Oak Tree Development Project el Eligibility Application uh, following updated communication from Oak Tree and Mass Housing. The issue is we currently have um, asked for a, a July 22nd hearing but there's difficulties with that. Doug, am I turning it over to you? Y yes, so Mr. Chairman. So, Doug Hine, please. Uh, good evening, members of the board, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the, as the board will recall, at its last meeting, we voted to uh, authorize a couple of different dates, although the 22nd looked like the most likely to host a hearing where the developers, Oak Tree, 
could uh, make further presentation to the board and answer the board specific questions about their some 200 odd page submission to mass housing that the board is going to produce a response to that submission um, for mass housing to consider in terms of determining whether or not this specific site should be eligible for a 40b project following some communications with the folks from oak tree it became clear that they weren't going to be available on the 22nd or actually any of the times that we had discussed here because of their own scheduling difficulties, summer vacations, things like that. I try to take it upon, my, um, upon myself to understand that this board in the town generally tries to be courteous and respect those types of scheduling conflicts. Unfortunately, the only date that they said that they could start doing it was August 5th, which was quite a ways out from where we had originally anticipated it. I was spoke to them, and after some back and forth with them and Greg Watson from Mass Housing, who was really terrific in trying to facilitate some of the negotiation about this, they also agreed to an extension of time to uh, put together the selectman's response after this hearing if it's going to happen on August 5th. Now, obviously, that depends on this board's schedule and if this board is willing to move it to August 5th, but that's what they're saying their basically only available time is. I do want to note some caveats that they presented to me. <clears throat> I know that the board is eager to have an opportunity to ask questions and to explore some of the presentations that they've made, representations that they've made in their uh, document submissions in greater depth. They've represented to me that there are certain things that they don't think they're going to have any more detail on, but I still think that uh, it's a worthwhile exercise for this board and for Oak Tree and for everyone involved because there's a big difference between five individual selectmen trying to sift through a 200 page document and being able to ask some direct questions to the folks who should have the most information about this project. So um, basically I think what the board needs to decide tonight is is this August 5th date viable for a public hearing to have Oak Tree come before the board, make a presentation and answer questions that members of the board have. Obviously, if it's a public hearing, there would be an opportunity for members of the public to have some kind of comments as well. Um, and if that's the case, how much time, determine how much time we really need from Mass Housing to get in that letter. I think that the board has a regularly scheduled meeting on August 17th. Uh, ideally, we'd like to ask until the 18th so that the board can vote on the letter that we'll be putting together with and for the board um, for their approval and have plenty of time to consider it. Does that make sense? I hope yeah, so, summary. but here's the issue. Um, when we set the date for July 22nd, every member of the board was available for that. Now that they've changed that, uh, we have two members of the board that aren't available on August 5th. Okay. So may I ask, what state are we in right now in terms of with mass housing? I know uh, that they're giving us 15 days beyond the hearing or beyond when it was originally due? So uh, the, the original due date of the letter was August 10th. Right. And <clears throat> in order, my, my feeling was that the board, if it's going to try to accommodate Oak, Oak Tree's schedule, would ideally not have to convene not only one, but two, would, would not have to convene two special meetings in order to, you know, uh, basically both have the hearing and then be able to consider any letter and vote on it before transmitting it. Um, so that would be the ideal time frame would be for the, for the 17th. Now, if the board uh, feels that it can't meet on the 5th, uh, it may be difficult for us to negotiate a, a date that works for, for the parties, and that's uh, a possibility um, in terms of they haven't really given me any alternate dates. I asked them if there were any alternate dates that they, they wanted after the 5th, and they would like to do it on the 5th, and I know that the selectmen you know, wanted to do it on the 22nd, and you know to the extent that we can't do it on the, the 5th. Um, I'm not sure how that would impact Mass Housing's extension is the only issue that I see. Okay, so we ha um, I really feel all board members should be here. I think it's, it's that important to hearing. Um, so I'll let my colleagues speak, which I probably should now anyhow, but uh, I really feel, I, from what I've learned, I believe on August 12th, was that all right with you, Steve? August 12th, would that work for you? Um, I will make Because I don't think ready. I asked you beforehand dates wise. Um, I but I, I, am I right, Dan? Mm -hmm. I'm Joe, good. myself, uh, Diane. Give me one second, I'll let you know. But if that cuts a week off, um, 
Oh, I, oh, you would be available the fifth. You're not right. Yes. You, you I'm not. Yeah, I mean, I these are vacations not. that have been planned by mm. people okay. a while ago. Now, Dan, I guess what I would recommend is that we is that I would be prepared to pr vote that you set the date, and you just make the. Like so, I I agree that we should try to have this, all five of us in the room. If we literally can't, that's so be it. If they can only literally only make one day when three of us yeah. can be here, then yeah. that's not very mm -hmm. that's not good. But the same, you know, there's I I don't think we can settle it here. I have no I'm happy to delegate that. But so you don't know if we went for the 12th whether the mass housing would then say all right we'll give you to the 27th I, I think the best thing that I can do mr. chairman is uh, take dates that you give me and try to work with within that schedule yeah. I, now obviously again uh, if, if we're saying that you know we wanted to have it on the 22nd they weren't available they said the fifth now the board's doesn't feel like the fifth is an appropriate date for the board. I'll do my best to try to find a mutually amenable date. I don't know that. Um, I think it might be difficult to get uh, an extension beyond what we had sort of anticipated. But um, if that's the case, then you know I'd certainly be willing to do my part to try to expedite the uh, having the letter ready so that we can turn it around as quickly as possible. Steve. I, I guess I just have a question about this extension. So it's 15 days after the hearing is with mass housing? So Did they say that? No. So what, what the... What the uh, oh, so we're just still going off the original letter so, that they sent. You haven't had further so negotiations? I've had further negotiations with both uh, mass housing and with Oak Tree. So what mass housing was amenable to doing was waiting until I had an opportunity to present this new, these new options to the board to decide how much time they would give us. What I'm trying to communicate is that the sense that I got from Mass Housing is that they are want to be helpful and want this to be a constructive exercise, but they also don't want to push this out another 30 days. So, to the extent that um, you know, the and they have to understand that the board has open meeting law requirements; it can't just consider, deliberate, and vote. You know, and that as Mr. Uh, Greeley is is noting that the board has its own scheduling, uh, you know, issues with in terms of long-standing vacations and things like that. Uh, so in other words, the letter is due August 10th. Our next regularly scheduled meeting is for August 17th. So it made sense to at least suggest that I was hoping the board would be able to respond by August 18th, which would be the next day after the board could take a vote. If we move the hearing out to the 12th um, and Oak Tree is amenable to attending on the 12th, uh, then I think you know, we can obviously work double time to try and have the letter ready for you as soon as possible and, you know, give you guys as much time as possible in advance of the 17th to review it so that we can still keep on the same general schedule. Oh, I mean, uh, Mass Housing has been terrific in the sense that they understood that I was asking for a somewhat flexible extension of time based on the board's availability to meet and approve a letter after a public hearing. I know it's a little bit convoluted. I'm Wait, sorry. So so Steve was just, up, yeah. just to clarify, so they said on the 18th we could send in. They said that we can have an extension of time, and I said that I would work out the exact parameters as to how long that extension would be, based on the board's feedback tonight. Okay. So we. So then. So after this, you'll have to or talk to Mass Housing again to finalize a date. The specific date. And yes. I, I guess. Mr. Mark. What I'm a, a bit concerned about is us, you know, setting this requesting a date and them telling us, oh, no, sorry, we didn't mean that, or something along those lines, and, and coming back and saying that we have to work within the initial parameters. So I, I guess I, I know it, it can be tough only having one meeting a month, but I, um, I guess I'm just um, a bit worried that, that while they're saying this now, they could change their mind at any second. We could be um, in a bit of trouble. Who's the we? You're, are you representing Oak Tree or Mass Housing? No, that we, that Arlington, and the board could be in jeopardy if we then now go back and say, oh, Mass Housing, we would like this date, and they say no and stick to the original date when the meeting's not planned. Right. right. So I've. Well. May I? So, yeah. I, I would suggest that as the fallback fallback that the July 22nd hearing still happens and that there would, would be no oak tree there and it would be time for public comment from departments with an interest and then the public and the board of course with pu uh, comments on the 196 page submission. I mean there's obviously something missing if oak tree's not there 
But if, if Oak Tree's not cooperating and Mass Housing is not willing to be flexible, I think you're absolutely right that the board should have the opportunity to still hold a hearing on what we know and then still have that opportunity to have a response into Mass Housing. But that would be the fallback to, to what you've described. Diane is up, then Joe, okay, Diane. I guess I would just maybe advocate for my current understanding and perhaps in terms of the 15, when I heard 15-day extension, to me that meant August 10th became August 25th. I, I, don't, I don't know that, that anybody said that we had a 15-day extension. I'm, for some reason I had 15 days in I, my head. I too did. I, yeah, I got why. something that said that, that the, um, we weren't granted the 30 days by, I'm blanking on Greg's last name. Watson. What's Mr. Watson, but I thought it said 15 days. So what, I, since you'll be speaking with Mr. Watson and others, is what I would like ideally to have happen is whatever day we have this hearing, um, if we go with the 22nd and then have to do something else and we're rushed, but if everybody can agree, it's just one week later, it's everybody else's summer schedules. It's the same night of the week as what they want. If the 15-day extension in order to give um, what we need to do the board, but mostly the town manager and department heads, that if we have the meeting on the 12th, then 15 days from that, would, our response would be due, recognizing that we do have a meeting at the end of the month, so we'll probably come in four or five days earlier. That would be my, if I could advocate for, because I know, you know, everyone's working cooperatively, and, you know, we want to stay that way, um, and just, you know, the board's trying to be as flexible as possible, and then I did have um, discussions with the manager um, and the chairman that we not follow the uh, process that we had down at the Hardy School. Um, if we could just have the presentation from Oak Tree just with regards to the Mugar Apostle, don't want to hear anything about Quaker community and the Cambridge Assisted Living and the project in North Reading and the project in Concord, Carlisle. And if we could maybe get it down to 30 minutes because their original presentation was like an hour 10 PowerPoint that really I don't think sets up the right tone and tenor um, for the meeting. And then my last request would be, if possible, because um, a lot of this is when we did the site visit and um, Ms. Noyes was pointing out um, hydrology and where it would go and the plans and um, other engineering plans when different people, including Corey Beckwith <coughs> and Ka Carol Kowalski um, from our planning department, myself and others, when we were pointing to plans that were submitted, they were saying, no, no, no. Um, they haven't been engineered yet. So at the very least, if, if we can't get um, beforehand, meaning not before that night that we sit down and have whatever meeting that Oak Tree is at, if we can't get details on that, if they could at least submit what plans they're now engineering, whether it's hydrology, whether it's traffic, whether it's whatever. Because um, there were like f four or five in the 196 page submission that were from Rizzo and Associates like 15 years ago. When I pointed that out, they said, oh no, we're gonna. So if we can't get details, can we at least get four or five bullet points? And I know you're at the mercy of what they say yes or no to. Thank you. So, so Joe was up next, that group. but you wanna say something directly to this? I, I do, I do, if, 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 if I may, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to be clear on, on what Oak Tree has represented. Their position is um, that they have made the submissions that they need to make for mass housing, that they will be uh, retaining and engaging in further studies, but that th those won't be ready on July 22nd, August 5th, or August 12th, or anything of that nature. Now that the board, I, may, I share the board's frustration about that, but just so we're clear on what the expectations are, I, I still think that this board should have the ability to make inquiries and ask questions that a lot of which I'm sh I know Ms. Mahan asked at the site visit, but as an individual, you know, at the site visit, not as the board convening as a body, which is a, which is a different, mm -hmm. a different uh, animal and a different type of uh, dialogue with uh, the developers. So I don't know that we should be expecting them to have radically new information as much as it should be an opportunity for this board to sort of probe into that information and make sure that we understand what they have submitted as much and what they say that they will submit. In other words, as, as Ms. Mohan will recall from the site visit, you know, they made statements about what they had and what they didn't have and that they would be submitting further information. But I think it's a fair point of inquiry for the board to say, well, I'd like to understand, you know, why that information wasn't submitted, you know, in the original packet, so that we can, 
you know, m put forth the most robust response we can to mass housing, whether this board feels that the should be eligible or it shouldn't be eligible. Um, with respect to the scheduling, I, I do want to say that I also think that Mr. Dunn's point is, is well taken, that maybe the best thing this board can do at this point is authorize its chairman to work with the town manager and town council to, you know, try to negotiate a date that's effective for everybody, um, because obviously there's been some difficulty in, you know, making sure that the board's schedules are well presented. I take responsibility f for that. Joe, with your indulgence, I just want sure. to make it clear, running this meeting that I expect I would be, I'm running this like a selectman's meeting, which, and I agree with limiting them to like 30 minutes for a presentation. But then all selectmen will speak, will speak next, questions, comments, anything. Then we'll take public input, and then the selectmen speak last. So, I mean, that's the way we run it here. That's the way I would, I would run it down there. I mean, I'm, I also expect that we're holding it downstairs in the main hall. I have a feeling it's going to be that crowded that we'll have to, have to set up the stage and microphone, almost a town meeting set up, I guess, uh, but where the board sits and Oak Tree can come before us and make presentations as good members of the public. So that's just the way I see it, Joe. I just want to be clear. That's the way I expect to run it. But Certainly. Forgive me, you were next. No problem. No, what I was actually going to say, I was going to um, actually say what, what Doug had said, that I, I think given the... Um, sensitivities around the scheduling, I, I think that Dan's proposal does make a lot of sense that we delegate to you to, to work on the, um, the, the date that, that, that makes the most sense and see how far we can push mass housing. I agree that it's ideal for all five members of the board to be here. I think there were two of us had some scheduling issues and, and quite honestly, I think that if there's a choice to be had, Ms. Mahan has to be here. We, we appointed her as the, the liaison on, on this, this um, project if, mm -hmm. if, if it comes to that and we can't uh, pull it off with all five members of, of the board. Um, the question that I had though is for this public hearing, do we have special notice requirements? How far in advance do we have to publish two times in the advocate or is it not that nature? So we're, we're calling it a special hearing. Uh, we're calling it a hearing because I think of the, I'm sorry, Mr. Kier, we're calling it a hearing because of the sort of nature of it. But technically speaking, this is not required by regulations of any kind. Um, it's not quite the same thing as um, the hearings that will be occurring before the ZBA if the housing, uh, mass housing approves the eligibility letter. Um, technically, they've provided a public information session with the Hardy School presentation. So I don't, I don't think the notice requirements would be in effect because uh, the selectmen technically could just respond based on the written submission alone. This isn't required as, as, as part of the selectmen's So strictly speaking, we're just held to the 48 hours of the open meeting. Obviously, we wouldn't want to, we'd want to provide more notice. Of course. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, thoughts? Sorry, so, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Briefly, uh, I just I am really I'm I, I'm, I, I'm happy to be very flexible, and anything that we can do within reason. I don't care if the meetings are on Mondays or other days. I just want to get it done. I want to get to the best document and response that we can. Yeah, I'm, I agree. It seems to me that we should do the following. I think we should reschedule. The July 22nd, and I don't. I know we're calling it a hearing, but I wonder whether we want to call this a special meeting of the Board of Selectmen for a hearing on the Mugar property. Uh, I, I want to keep it clear: this is a meeting of the Board of Selectmen, right? I mean, yes, that's, uh, it is. Uh, very important for us, I believe, to uh, lead this discussion and. Um, what questions they don't answer that night? I want us to follow up with a letter. You know, we're not ready for that water mitigation question You'll, that you will certainly come up with, Diane. Uh, so we track that and we send that to them and say, well, we eventually would, would request an answer to this. But um, so it sounds to me like they are willing to meet on August 5th. Yes. I, I believe what I would try and do with Doug and Adam is try and get them to change to August 12th. But if they won't, to accept the 5th. Sorry, Joe. Uh, Right, and again, you could be there on the 5th. Um, I'd rather not, uh, you know, okay. we just talked through code of conduct how we are a board, you know. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, I understand, you know, schedules for vacations are made months in advance. 
So I would ask that Adam or Doug, I guess Doug, you're doing the negotiation with Mass Housing and Oak Tree, or you both do it. Yeah. To, 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 uh, to uh, direct you. Yeah. <laughs> How am I sounding now, James? Uh, to ask them just to, we, would, we request that they come to a meeting we've scheduled for August 12th. But let me ask you this. Are we killing you two now with your ability to respond? Because I believe we can hold a special selectman's meeting at 7.30 in yeah, the morning, exactly. if need be, yep. mm -hmm. to approve a letter from us, mm -hmm. uh, the response to the appeal, whatever that's called. The response to the project. Right. right. So, so we don't have to worry whether that's done by August 17th so, or not, so right? I, sorry. I think, I think you know, what, what I will try to place the premium on, or Adam and I will try to place the premium on, if I'm hearing the board correctly, is trying to get agreement to the 12th. And if that affects what extension mass housing is willing to give us, then we will place the premium on making sure that as much of the board can be there as possible and turning around the letter as fast as possible so that if we have to have a special meeting because mass housing says, you know, August, you know, 17th or 18th or nothing, um, then I, I feel confident that we can do it. So, I don't want to overset my bounds. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm with you. I, I, I. Okay. Um, so, then on the motion by Mr. Dunn directing me to uh, set this up uh, and seconded by second by Mr. Byrne, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 And I'm going to take an unusual step, but either James or Bob, do you want to ask a question here? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The press, you know, I mean, Absolutely. but this, this has got to be new to James, but this is, this is a huge issue for us, James. Uh, it's called the New yeah, Gut Property. You're already starting to get information on it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, are we... I think we're good. Yeah. All right? Yep. Okay. Uh, so, all, the, did I, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Uh, uh, all those opposed. Okay. So... Thank you, sir. So hope. important, we'll vote twice on Yeah. What are you doing? I told you to take this thing and run this. Uh, uh, so, correspondence Move received. received. Move received. Is there a second? second. Discussion? Mr. Greeley. Yes. Uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam, do, if, do we hear anything else about what happened in the school committee, uh, the Minuteman School Committee meeting last week? Uh, in, what is, in regards to what uh, this came out of? I so, uh, so, obviously, so what, what we're moving to receive is a motion for, or is a notice from the school committee that they're saying we're not working on a regional agreement anymore, which, and we think would be lovely if you did, which is I didn't think was particularly helpful. And I'm curious, were there any other, do you know, or do they do anything else related to either the building or the? Um, no, I'm I'm definitely not aware of any other action taken. Though I know our school committee member, I think was quoted in local press as being, based on this board's action, being opposed to putting any ballot initiative out there for the building okay. project. All right. Did they vote on Wayland? Uh, um, I remain very disappointed, but there's a lot of work left to be done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. May, Mr. Chairman, may I, <clears throat> town councilor just asked me, I believe this, uh, this correspondence received says they want to take themselves out of making any further attempts to change the regional agreement outside of what they're going to be statutorily required to do based upon Wayland's request. Okay. Okay. Good. Yeah, Mr. Kiro. I was just wondering, are there any plans for uh, managers within the district to get together to take another crack at this? Or I, I believe in this, so well, in this email, Ed says, we'll talk about this at our upcoming managers administrators meeting. Uh, we will need to pull together the managers to see what we can do. There's, no, there's nothing on the books, but we'll have to do that. On the motion to receive, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Um, so, uh, new business, and we'll start with, so what'd you learn last week there, Mr. Chapdelaine, in your sustainability course? Do you want, you want the whole thing tonight? Were you going to do that? Yeah, I, I was on my list, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we can wait. We'll, we'll, <laughs> Marie, new business? Nothing. Okay. Doug, new business? I'm just waiting to hear the town manager. <laughs> Get on the edge of your seat now, okay? <laughs> Tingling with excitement. So, uh, e excuse my voice tonight. I'm a, a little, little hoarse. But uh, I, I had a couple, and then I'll, I'll close with that. Uh, 
received, uh, the deadline came and went on Friday in terms of uh, CPA candidates for the, the board's four at-large position appointments. We received 20 applicants. I had sent a list to the board earlier today, if you haven't seen that yet. Uh, so uh, the chairman and I will start this week of pulling together the screening committee uh, and figuring out um, exactly how we want to handle those 20. Uh, I know the chair and I spoke today about whether or not we'd want the screening committee to do some first round interviews and then give us uh, some candidates to interview following that. But we'll work on that in the next several weeks, still working up to that September deadline for getting the four candidates appointed. I'll say I think we've got some very, very strong candidates uh, among <coughs> that pool of 20. Uh, may maybe all strong candidates. So I think one way or the other the board will have uh, both a good, a good pool of people but also some difficult choices to make. Can I, uh, can I ask please, the yeah. board opinion on that? Um, 20 candidates, I, I did expect a lot. Uh, and you know, in essence, they're handing out more each year, uh, not they hand it out, but they will recommend uh, more each year than we actually hand out in the, C in the uh, CDBG funding. So I can understand why a lot of people would be interested in this, but uh, with 20 candidates, and many of them are names we all know, and all, all the rest of them I'm sure are names we'll come to know or that are highly qualified, uh, as you know, the process we've all voted on is uh, the screening committee is going to make recommendations to Adam and I, who are then going to make recommendations to this board. Should we bring you only four candidates? Do you want eight candidates? How, how, uh, what are your thoughts on what Adam and I present to you? I mean, I think our goal originally was us handing the, uh, recommending we, four candidates. That was our original proposal. But now that there's 20, I'm scared, <laughs> Steve. Um, uh, I, for me, it doesn't change uh, the process that we set out. I, um, I, I like the idea, and I understand, um, you know, giving the board a little more flexibility on it. But something would kill me about getting names and having, you know, us Say discuss no. it here and then tell people no. Right. Um, and and I think that. Um, <laughs> Mr. Chairman and the town manager are fully qualified Can to make those decisions. We lobbed it back, Kevin. Yeah, uh, Mr. Kerr. I, I agree with Mr. Byrne. I mean, I, I think the, the the reason of having that two two tiered selection process was to avoid the really public embarrassment here for for candidates. So yeah. we have full faith and confidence in, in you to. Uh, yeah. Adam, I'm unavailable, so I'm going to just leave that to you if you don't mind. But I'm, you, I'm, I'm with, used to telling people no. Yeah, we're, we're going to uh, meet with the screening committee this uh, Friday afternoon. <coughs> that, that, that's shaky, but we're, we're working right. on it. How, however, I would say, I mean, I think, I, I don't think we had specified in the process how many candidates you expect from the screening committee. So, I mean, certainly. Well, that, we're going to meet with them on that, yeah. too. So. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I would guess at least eight, right? So yeah. he and I interview the eight, yeah. uh, you know, and, and we have some of those uh, characteristics, <coughs> geographic distribution across town. And, uh, you know, I also think uh, interests and in, in aspects. Sorry, Adam, you're in business. No, is that, are you, the board could with that. Uh, so I wanted to mention, cheerful, I mentioned cheerful where you sit, uh, had a great weekend, uh, was able to go down to the reception uh, yesterday and bring a chair home that after I decided to purchase realized was designed by uh, the family of uh, Select Mancuro. Uh, <laughs> not by me. Mine did not sell. Is that the code of conduct? Wait a, Wait a minute. minute. Savannah and Lisa. You bought a chair that was by the Curo family. So it was Are a, you it, kidding me? It was a me? small I, I, children's chair. That I'm doing a chair next year and you better buy it. <laughs> I have to bring five chairs home. <laughs> It was a timeout chair for a child, so not that I had the need yet, but the, 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 the anticipated But need. we know that Pearl will be a perfect child and have no use for it whatsoever. We did so. sit her down, and, uh, and she fit right in there. So. Tough dad. Uh, I wanted to mention it was under correspondence received, but I think it's worth mentioning the $240,000 Green Communities Grant that was received by the town last week. That the, the, the lion's share of the credit goes to Ruthie Bennett, the town's regional energy manager and the energy working group for the hard work they've put into to coming up with the projects, uh, applying, receiving grant awards, implementing the projects, and that's resulted in this grant. I, I do think it's important to mention this now totals about $938,000 in green communities grants that this town has received since 2010. That's almost a million dollars uh, in money that the actions that the town took to become designated as a green community have as leverage from the state. Uh, that, that's a, a real big number, a significant number, so I think that's a, that's a credit to the town and the leadership the board showed in 2010 to get designated as a green community. 
so then the final thing I'll say is that leads to the um, Executive Education and Sustainability Leadership Program that I attended last week. Uh, first, I want to thank the board again for providing me with that opportunity. It was really a, a tremendous week. Uh, there was a great cohort um, in, in the group. There were leaders of uh, higher education, business. Uh, uh, I was the only town manager. There were some municipal energy managers. Uh, but there was really a nice uh, cross uh, of industries, non nonprofits as well. Um, and, I, and I mentioned to the chairman, uh, sort of the, the, the leader of, of the whole initiative coming out of the School of Public Health was Dr. John or Dr. Jack Spengler. Uh, and the name, it looked familiar to me, but I thought, you know, big, big Harvard professor, you know, you know what, what are the odds? And on the first day, he comes up to me after some introduction and says, oh, Arlington, he goes, oh, you might be familiar with my mother, Peg Spengler. Uh, so <laughs> it, it instantly, uh, it was a college really? connection uh, to, to the program. Elected to the Hansen Board of Selectmen. Yeah. Wow. So, so, so that said, um, you know, I'd be happy to talk in more depth at some point, but the whole framework was uh, promoting what would be a leadership model um, of having your, your normal uh, chain of command with a hierarchical framework be combined with what would be a more networked leadership framework where, um, you know, people work together outside of their roles, but then report it back into the normal roles within an organization to be able to come up with uh, new ideas and new ways of doing things, which is really what sustainability in a lot of ways is about, is rethinking the processes that any organization is using. So uh, it, it was a great program. Uh, it, was, it was very stimulating, and uh, I think um, it'll, it'll certainly have a lot that I'll be able to bring back to the organization in the upcoming weeks and months, which is probably the, the last thing the department heads want to hear me say leading up to the next department heads meeting, but uh, I think it was a very, very good program, and thank you again. And that's, that's all I have. Awesome. No uh, uh, just one thing. We're um, the parking parking implementation governance committee. We're hearing from a um, a vendor tomorrow for the um, meters on the streets, and so I'm really looking forward to that. And um, I'll be happy to report back at our next meeting in August. Yeah, and, and Stephen, just something that has come up to me a couple times. People need to clarify while the meters are closed. The timing is not, if it's a two hour zone, if it's because people are getting tickets and they're saying, I thought they didn't have to use meters. And I said, were you there more than two hours? Well, yeah, well, that's why you got we, we made a point to uh, say that in, they were supposed, the treasurer's office was supposed to be putting there are big uh, signs uh, to these that. bags on the. There are also big signs. Oh, good. Say three, three, it, say, it says three fee free, yeah. three hour limit. It doesn't say the hours though, but it does say three hour, three hour limit. limit. Yeah, I, I, we tried to be very clear about that, but we'll, um, I'll bring that up tomorrow at our meeting and we can, um, we'll can we discuss it. But, but there are so many differing limits in Arlington, one hour, mm. 15 minutes, two hour, three hours, so. And we're going to do our best to codify that through this group, at least in the center for now. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Miss mm -hmm. Mahan. Um, yes. <clears throat> and the chairman reminded me of this, so thank you. Um, and and thank you for recognizing Mr. Coughlin and Mr. Robillard uh, at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, to that vein, I'm, um, along with Mr. Byrne, waiting for the Arlington Select Group um, in terms of um, organizing around the field. But some of my colleagues in the sports world have also gone to Representative Garbley um, about possibly getting some funding for the Summer Street Robillard field. Um, I saw him on robes his wake and he said I could announce this but that because um, I said I don't want to do it and it gets vetoed or whatever but he told me he was successful in procuring $25,000 to go towards the effort um, to maintain upgrade um, Robillard Field it does have to go before the governor who could veto it but from what I understand from the representative and I know Mr. Burns <laughs> much more versed with this he told me it's in with a, a bunch of amendments that they if they do anticipate the governor veto, it wouldn't just be vetoing the 25000 for Robolot. It would get put back in. So as close to sure money as you can, um, I'm, I'm really happy about that. And I said I didn't want to jinx it, but he said, no, it, it would be okay to announce it. And then the second thing is um, I mentioned at the last meeting under new business, um, the athletic director, Coach Dugalecki, um, asked for a meeting with me just in terms of, you know, out there in the field. and. Um, and I have had a brief conversation with the town manager, and we'll be meeting with him, I think, believe Wednesday or Thursday, just to sort of go over the whole thing. But um, one of the things um, the athletic director was pointing out was, besides the fact that the turf is now 
They've begun to uh, take off the old turf and put in the new turf, which we're very happy for, from capital planning. So the field will be closed till probably about mid-August on that. Um, Dr. Janger sent a notice to all the parents to let them know. But she did indicate there was some sort of what I call short money. <clears throat> I'm getting Mr. Chapdelaine's losing my voice. Short money things that um, she would like to do. For years, I was able to procure a storage bin um, through Joe Nolan, but now it's Everstar and changed over, so that's gone. So she'd like to get some sort of a shed um, for the equipment as well as um, where the hurdlers and the sand is over by the track, you know, get some protective covering there. So what I told her was of the Warren A. Pierce Field Remediation Fund, which the chair was on the board back then, and Mr. Sullivan and superintendent, then Superintendent Donovan, we were successful in gaining a lot of money, which, you know, initially we had 750,000 or something in there. It's down to short change. It's like five to 8,000, no more than that. So um, I've asked the town manager if he could get an approximation of that, and I told Melissa, the athletic director, we can send her that figure. You know, there's no need. We, we've used it to put in the handicap elevator, fix the insignia in the middle of the field, lacrosse nets. So we've been, since it's short money, we, we've been able to do that and probably zero that fund out. And then um, the athletic director Pierce meeting. And then there are some other things um, that I discussed with um, Melissa, and um, I'm just going to discuss him with Adam first to see if he has any thoughts on, on ways to go and things like that. But um, my short-term plug would be there's a little bit of uncertainty around the track when that gets renovated. I was cross-country myself and um, been talking to the people who put the track in. We basically, according to them, and they've been very honest with us in helping us extend it out, this year if we... Um, renovate it and the money's in there it's just a matter of when it's going to happen to me if the turf is going out there anyways um, we can place a new turf over the current track I mean a new track over the current track their feeling is if it goes one more season especially a bad winter season we're going to have probably have to spend three times as much to dig up because you won't be able to put the band-aid over and because of the contamination <coughs> you know something that could be 50 to 100,000 could be 250, 300,000. So, but I'm going to work with the town manager on that, as well as a few other things. But I just wanted to let you know an update at that meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Carroll. No, no business. Mr. Dunn. Nothing this week. Anything right to back or London? Nothing. Iceland's amazing. Yeah, no news from London. It's still there. <laughs> Thank you for checking in on it. <laughs> so, um, just. To inform the board that at our last meeting, as you know, we approved a contract for our new controller, Richard Biscay. I spoke to him the following day, and he was in Chicago on his uh, cross-country trip from Seattle, I think it started, Adam? Sounds right, yeah. And uh, he accepted, we've accepted, so he will be starting as our controller on August 17th. That's all I have for new business. Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Is there a second? second. Uh, the next meeting of the Board of Selectmen is going to be August 5th or 12th or somewhere thereabouts. <laughs> and regularly scheduled is going to be August 17th. All those in favor of adjourning, please say aye. 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 All those opposed. We are adjourned.